going to show you um, a demagnetizer as used on um, tape players and a few other things uh, just how to use it now this is a typical um, demagnetizer is rubber tipped and it plugs into the mains 240 volts this one let's plug that in uh, there's no noise so you think well is it even on you know there's no vibration no noise at all so I've got a gauss meter here just turn it on and uh, set it to um, AC because this thing is AC and um, milli teslas can be the same as um, Gauss. Uh, one Tesla is um, 10,000 Gauss, so otherwise it's the same reading. Uh, here's the probe, and uh, just um, I just put the probe on the end of the on the right on the end of the thing. Look, it's um, 113 Gauss. Just move it around a bit. 130 gauss right right on the very tip about 130 gauss uh, anyway so um, is that strong well I can show you if that's not that strong actually because here is um, a DC rare earth DC magnet from a little electric motor and um, it's DC's, but uh, I'll just switch this to DC. But um, let me check the Gauss on this. One thousand seven hundred. So that is a strong magnet, and this one. There, let me change that to AC. Let's check this one. 140 so it's a massive difference so this isn't actually that strong compared to that now they talk about keeping this away from magnetic materials like tapes credit cards readers and that in fact this field is only strong if you put it right on the very end because um, even this uh, very strong DC magnet will not demagnetize your tape on your tape recorder unless you put it within a few millimeters of it I'll just show you how strong it is. Here we've got a little metal ball bearing. Yeah. Pulling it backwards and forwards. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's pretty strong. So um, although they say beware using this, it is not that strong. And by the way, the field on the end fluctuates at the, the 50 hertz or 60 hertz if you in some countries so it's going north south north south north south 50 times a second so um that's how it's going to uh, demagnetize the uh, parts on the tape recorder which i'll show you do that next using the uh, demagnetizer just to demagnetize any metal parts on the tape recorder or anything else that might become magnetized um, this is plugged in uh, it produces the uh, magnetic field right on the tip it's got a little plastic tip so you can't scratch anything uh, you just um, you're really only interested in parts like the record and the raise head which may have got some uh, Residual magnetism, it's pretty unlikely, but you might as well use this. Uh, just put it on the head. And in fact, as it touches, gets close to the uh, magnetic material, you can feel a little buzzing. Uh, just move it around at various angles like this. And, um, and then just move it slowly to the next one. Move it around the head various angles and then just go any other metal parts most of these are aluminium so they won't have any effects uh, the, the aluminium parts you won't feel any buzzing these are aluminium and uh, basically that's it 
you, you just move it away. Uh, all this stuff about creeping slowly forward and creeping slowly back. Here's this load of rubbish. This um, thing is uh, uh, oscillating at 50 hertz, which is um, you'd have to move the thing really, really fast to <laughs> leave a north or a south on anything where it was touching. I mean, 50 times a second, so it's just moving at the normal speed. I mean, it's, the, the field is fluctuating so fast. There's no, you don't have to creep forward, creep forward, creep back, creep back for meters. I mean, this has no effect with after a few millimeters. I mean, people talk about you know, walking away meters away from something. But um, anyway, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, normally it has very little effect. These heads don't really get magnetized, even if you put a pretty strong magnet near them. But it might improve the high frequency. Cleaning them will do that as well. Anyway, that's how you do it with a little magnetizer. And um, I recommend doing it in the books after every 10 hours or something. It seems a bit excessive to me. Anyway, anything that helps uh, the performance. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So there you go. Here's a Gauss met meters, zeroed it, and the probe. Uh, this will measure any uh, very small magnetic force. As you see, it's zero. If you put it on the head and uh, move it around. Well, it's zero, really. I mean, there's no magnetic, nothing. So none of these parts are magnetized, so there's no need to worry about anything there. You might have bought some tapes off eBay or got some tapes off someone and you want to erase the recordings and they might not quite line up with the um, erase heads on your machine or there might be four track and you've got a two track machine there might be some uh, recording left after you've even put them through the erase which might just uh, bleed through in the quiet passages so um, you want to completely erase the tape you can buy an expensive bulk eraser or uh, you can um, get a very strong DC magnet like this one, which is from a little electric motor. You can buy these uh, from a model place, uh, less than £20 generally. They're very strong. And um, I can, I'll show you how I can uh, erase your tape with them. Uh, it's DC erasing, but it completely erases the entire tape. And then um, when you use the tape, you won't have to worry about... Uh, any old recordings uh, bleeding through at all. So I'll show you how strong this is. Uh, people uh, worried about these um, strong magnets magnetizing everything or erasing things you don't want to. Uh, the tapes um, are very resilient against uh, magnets. You have to get pretty close. I'll show you. I'll just I'll switch this to play. Um, and then I'll move the, the magnet closer and you'll hear the tape you have to get it about there, which is about there. About that's about five or six millimeters away, and it's completely erasing it. Completely gone, and that's on both completely across the whole t tape. So. It doesn't even have to touch, you can get within um, two or three millimeters, but one millimeter is good. And I'll show um, you how I just uh, st strap it onto this with a little tie wrap and it completely erase it. Just leave it running while you're doing something else. Here I am uh, bulk erasing a big tape. Uh, it was a four track tape, but this is only a two track machine. 
So I needed to get all the uh, pre-recorded four tracks off as a two-track erase head, but probably still leave a bit of residual either side. So um, how to do it? Well, uh, a lot of people will say it's a bad idea, but it's not any problem. This here is um, a very high strength magnet, rare earth magnet from um, a model car motor. Uh, this was um, one I had. You can actually buy these for less than 20 quid and they're extremely strong. Um, I just tie wrapped it just on there and the tape just passes very close within a millimetre, which is easy enough. Within three millimetres it will erase the whole thing. And um, i turn this up. It's just background noise. All four tracks have been erased, so i just leave that running. And afterwards, if you're worried about magnetising any of these parts, just put a demagnetizer on it. But it works extremely well, and then I'll have a completely erased tape. Okay, so the DC erased, but I mean, when you put it through the um, record phase, the um, high frequency erase head's going to clean it up as well. So I've done quite a few tapes like that. It just, uh, just pops on there, I can easily take it off. So that's how I bulk erase uh, tapes. This machine's almost finished. I've just got to do a few tweaks on the um, azimuth. And um, put it back in its case. 